The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast featuring Jeff Upson and Eric Knobsnyder. PA Power Wrestling. PA Power Wrestling. Pennsylvania is wrestling. What's going on, wrestling fans? You are now tuned in to the PA Power Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Upsend, joined as always by Eric Knopsnyder. And Eric, it's like the night before Christmas, but it's better because it's the night before the wrestling season starts. And there are a whole lot of presents to unwrap tomorrow. Yeah, Santa Claus is coming down the chimney tonight, and tomorrow we're going to wake up to a ton of different tournaments, uh, same with Saturday. So it's like Christmas, but it's for an entire couple months, so... Pretty excited about that. Um, and we just got done on, on Sunday. Uh, we had our media day up at Pitt Johnstown. It was the second annual PA Power Wrestling Media Day brought to you by the Tribune Democrat. And uh, definitely a good, good showing for teams and wrestlers who showed up. Uh, definitely got a lot of good coverage from schools from around the area and actually some, some that made a pretty long trip. Yeah, that was awesome that uh, we saw so many schools out there. As you said, a lot in the Johnstown area, but had some Whitfield schools there, had State College coming in from, uh, you know, an hour and a half away. So great to see uh, the turnout there. And thanks to everyone who who came out and did their part to uh, try to get wrestling some more coverage. Uh, Had some TV stations there. So good, uh, good event all around. Yeah, and I absolutely uh, want to see that grow in the years to come. Uh, like you said, we had a couple news uh, news stations there. We had a couple papers there. So definitely a, a good showing for, for wrestling and to get people excited about the sport. Um, but, it, you know, you have to show up to do it. So we, we definitely uh, want to see that grow in the years to come. But uh, thank you for all the teams and the coaches that did make the effort and show up and definitely uh, had a good time there. So the the one the one downside of that is, a lot of people are asking me about preseason rankings. Hey, when are the preseason rankings coming out? And, you know, I I don't know about you, Eric, and I've been doing rankings for the better part of 10 to 15 years. uh, And I I don't like preseason rankings for for a variety of reasons, but I'll give you a few of them right now. Uh, One is it's a, it's a guessing game on weights. um, And I can't tell you how many text messages, DMS I've gotten in the last 16 hours hey this this wrestler is going to be here you have them ranked there well well, yeah no duh i i don't know where they're wrestling because they haven't wrestled yet yeah it's uh i understand completely what you're saying the rankings are are fairly new to me last year was the first year that i did them uh with pa power and uh that you're right the preseason is really difficult and i've got a couple different things to work in i send out questionnaires to uh, most of the the coaches in the southwest region which i do the rankings for and so i get their input that sends it back to me on what a weight class is but that can sometimes be two weight classes different than what they put on track wrestling so i'm saying okay which one do i believe do i believe the one that they have online do i believe the one they sent to me or do i believe what i really think this kid is going to weigh because some of the coaches like to to play a little gamesmanship and list kids at, at two weight classes heavier than they're really going to be so it's it's crazy and then the ones that even the ones that are honest they might say 113 120 so i'm like okay is he starting out the season at 120 and just drop into 113 for the postseason or is he going to be here for a week and then be down it, it's really tough to tell yeah and it's it's unfortunate because i mean if i if a, if it was my choice and i had it my way i would I would rather do my first set of rankings uh, right before like the holiday tournaments. Um, But unfortunately the, you know, I'm a man of the people and the people want rankings. The people got to know Jeff, the the people got to know, but then the people (laughs) complain when you have someone ranked at, you know, one weight and they're really, okay, that's great. I, I appreciate your input, but maybe I should go along your, your route and send out questionnaires. But the problem is I'm doing five regions. Uh, I understand. Uh, you know, I do. So you do one region, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I do five, five regions and a state. So it's like, it's a lot. It's definitely um, a little overwhelming. And I feel like this week I was between my real job uh, and the rankings. It was, it was a lot. This I'm, I'm very tired for this week. <laughs> I understand. Uh, I, I've had a long week as well. Uh, we just put out uh, three pages of, of wrestling content. Uh, in today's paper, as a matter of fact, uh, I had to organize all that, get everything put together for the Tribune Democrat. Uh, so 
a lot a labor of love, but still a lot of work. Yeah, and that's at least you're you're putting out good coverage of wrestling, and I appreciate people like you who are, you know, uh, putting wrestling in the paper and getting it out to to the folks uh, that are, are excited about the start of the season. So with that, though, we did come out with our preseason rankings, which uh, of course they're they're going to have some errors in terms of where they are in weights. Um, so I don't really take these rankings uh, as too seriously uh, in terms of where people are going to fall, uh, especially like you said, with the, the two pound allowance moving up. Uh, Cause I, I don't know about when it was when you wrestled back in the 1800s, Eric, but when I wrestled the two pound allowance didn't come into like mid January or early January. Uh, I think whenever I wrestled, you just, uh, there weren't even scales back then. It, it was like the Monty Python skit where you just kind of balanced with a duck and you would see. Uh, oh, and you, okay. I see. I see. Well, there's this thing called like a two pound allowance. So now they have weight classes. And if you weigh in at, at one weight, you have to be under that weight. But at, around Christmas time, you get two pounds. Um, so you can, you can fluctuate a little bit. So it's actually pretty neat. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of wrestlers are going to start out at a weight higher than it is when they they go to the the postseason or even uh, the post two pounds. So, and typically our rule at PA Power is is you're you're ranked where you wrestle. So it's not where you are anticipated to go until you wrestle at that weight. Um, we typically rank you at the weight in which you wrestle, uh, unless you're weighing in at 182 and just bumping up to 95 for dual meets or, or things like that. So there's, there's obviously caveats. Yeah. And it, it's a little strange. Of course, uh, people that don't know the sport are like, wait a minute, why is it a growth allowance, but everybody's going down a weight class then. Yeah. People don't get it. And <laughs> that's fine. And I just tell them, bless you, you know, you're, you'll be, you'll be okay. Uh, just, just cheer and, uh, you know, say, just say what the person beside you is yelling. That's the same. That's what wrestling fans do. They just yell like whatever the head coach yells. You just hear parents in the stands yelling what they just yelled. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, one thing we had didn't have uh, scheduled to talk about, but I wanted to bring up really quickly uh, that, that we ran into at the media day was the impact of the two piece uniform. Uh, I didn't really think it was going to be that big. I know I heard some people that, you know, are promoting it and I just kind of blew it off like, ah, whatever. But the, the coaches that we talked to there said, yeah, that it really is having an impact. And especially at like the junior high level, they're seeing their numbers increase because kids are excited that they don't have to wear a singlet. Yeah. And that's interesting, Eric, because I was sort of of the same school of thought as, eh, well, is it really going to change that much? And I think where we're seeing a lot of the changes are in the youth and smaller schools. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what school was it? Uh, was it Ligonier Valley? Ligonier that said, Valley, yeah. They said yeah. their junior high, they said last year they had six kids on the junior high. This year they have 23. Now, they didn't attribute all of that to, uh, to the change in the rules, but even the wrestlers were saying, yeah, it, it made a big difference. These kids that you know wouldn't have given it a try before are now coming out for the team. Uh, I still, you know, I'm, I, I hope it works. I, I, if it is, I'm all for it. Uh, you know, I didn't think it would, would make much of a difference, but even if you get a few more kids out and the, the other guys that are wrestling like the two piece, why not? I mean, I, I thought it would make a difference, but not so, so quickly. And I thought it would take its roots more in the youth and then work its way up. But I remember Robert Patrick, uh, from Ligonier Valley said, yeah, he asked three kids from Ligonier Valley. He was like, Hey, you want to come out for the wrestling team? And they immediately said yes, because they, they liked a two piece, two piece uniform, um, which is really interesting. Well, I guess uh, the, the thing is, is you and I both grew up with the sport. We're around it our whole lives. So the, the singlet was, was nothing strange or, or foreign to us. It was just part of it. Uh, and I guess I, I, I forget that, that other people haven't been around that all the time. And it is new and foreign and strange to them. And, and I always took it as well. You know, if you're saying that's the reason you're not coming out, then you're probably not going to stick it out anyway. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. It's maybe a, maybe yeah. these, these people, you know, they, it's just completely strange strange to them and if you can eliminate that barrier why not do it yeah i'm gonna say that it's most likely the the latter there where people um it's just a different generation you know uh we're seeing a different generation grow up and and uh i I think we are going to see a move towards more compression and and the two-piece uniform and i think it's going to help our numbers uh i don't think it's it's going to just blow up the sport in terms of participation, but I definitely think we're going to see an uptick, uh, in, in participation. I'm, I'm hoping, uh, yeah, whether if, we, if that's the case, anything to make the, the sport stronger, I'm for. 
So uh, thank you for getting off off topic for us, Eric. It was a good um, topic, though. No, it was. It was. A, it was a great topic, and we will revisit that. I'd like to talk a little bit more about that with some some fans and some coaches about the the impact of that. So we need to do sort of like a special uh, in depth look at that. I don't want to just gloss over that. So um, we'll definitely revisit that topic, but. Let's let's move into what the fans really want, and that's an analysis of the preseason state rankings. Uh, which, yes, they they are a little bit in the in the side of uh, we're we're still guessing on weights and where people are going. But after this weekend, wherever you wrestled, you you will be ranked. So let's start at at class double A at one hundred six, and the first wrestler ranked in the state, the top ranked wrestler, Sheldon Seymour from Troy. Uh, this is a guy who is extremely undersized. Uh, last year as a freshman he was still a state qualifier he went 30 and 9 last year but we saw him at at Fargo he wrestled like 94 in Fargo so uh, yeah still not four months ago yeah so I I don't think he's gonna have a problem with 106 this year but I mean we're talking about a guy who was maybe 20 pounds underweight 15 pounds underweight last year and still made it to the state tournament and won a few matches Um, so I I would say right now, Sheldon's definitely got a chance to, to live up to that number one ranking until we may see some people from 113 drop, but Sheldon Seymour from Troy comes in ranked number one, John Consorti from Wilson. Now this is a, this is an interesting one because he's a senior. Um, and last year he was 30 and five, but did not wrestle in the postseason. Uh, the year before that, he was eighth in the state at 106 pounds. He kind of jumped up. Last year, he was at 120, 113, but he registered to compete at Super 32 at 106 pounds. So there's a chance we do see him down at this weight. Yeah, and that's you talk about the rankings and how difficult it is. 106 is probably the hardest one because you don't know who is you there most kids grow from that 106 over the the summer and and are moving up in weight and then you've got the freshmen coming in so you don't know who's going to be there it's uh, 106 is definitely a trying one to rank yeah and if preseason rankings weren't hard enough 106 is terrible in that sense because you know i there's some people some rankers out there uh, and there's, there were, this is only a small group of, of people out in the world, but there's some people that say, I will never rank any freshman before he's, he wrestles a match, uh, in high school. And I'm like, well, yeah, but what happens one Oh six when you have nobody but freshmen there? Um, and you know, I do enough research on the top incoming freshmen that I'm pretty confident in where I put freshmen. I'm not just putting them in for the sake of filling a spot. If, if I know a freshman based on his experiences and based on his, uh, head to head matchups, I feel comfortable. That's the whole point of ranking is, is predicting someone and where they're going to be. So um, I don't have a problem ranking freshmen, but at the same time with 106, it's tough because you don't know who's going to go where. But number three in the state at 106 pounds in class double A is Connor Redinger from Quaker Valley, who was on our top incoming freshman report. Uh, he comes in number three with a zero and zero record in his career, but uh, he has a lot of upside. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and as we talked about, I mean, he's first of all, he's going to be seeing some of the same kids that he's been facing for the past couple years because there are going to be a lot of freshmen in there. And at this point, what he's done, he's proven that he's capable of competing against some of the best guys in the state, no matter what their grade level. Right. And I, I agree with you there. So that's a little bit different for 106. Uh, 113, we're moving up and state champion, returning state champion Bo Bayless from Reynolds. Uh, He's a a junior this year. He's 72 and 13 in his career. He comes in ranked number one in the state. Behind him is Caden Cassidy, now of Chestnut Ridge. He's a sophomore. Last year, he was third in the state while competing for Bishop McCourt. And those two did face off uh, multiple times last year with Bayless winning. Um, And then number three is Elijah Bundro from Wilson, who's also a sophomore. He was fourth in the state, 39 and four. But 113 has six returning medalists all ranked uh in, in the top six here at 113 pounds now granted we don't know if some of these guys are gonna start at 120 drop down but uh this is looking obviously like a, a strong weight class because we see so many uh young wrestlers return yeah you got so many of those guys that were at 106 last year and are right now uh looking like 13 pounders but as you said they might be 120 right now who knows some of these guys by the end of the year might still be small enough to go down to 106 so uh tough to tell but certainly at this stage looks like it's going to be a pretty talented field 
at 120, we had the top three finishers from 113 pounds from last year. Uh, Jarrett Lane from Southern Columbia, he leads the way. He's uh, number one in state. He was undefeated last year, 48 and 0. He's committed to Lehigh. He's a two time state finalist, uh, three time state medalist. He comes in ranked number one in the state. Behind him is state runner up Chase Shields from Bishop McDevitt. He's a junior, uh, also a two time state medalist. He lost to Jarrett Lane in the finals last year. And then senior Wyatt Lutz from Montoursville, he comes in number three. And Wyatt Lutz is a, a one-time state place winner, a two-time state qualifier. So definitely some talent here. Again, another weight class where there's eight returning medalists. Uh, and that always happens at 120 because we see so many returners from 13 and guys bumping up from 106, 113. It's it's always a, a really deep weight. Yeah, you even have a guy like Josh Boozel who was uh, in the state finals last year at 106, doesn't make the top three. So, yeah, very deep weight there. 126, Bronson Garber from Upper Dolphin. He's now a junior. He's a two-time state medalist. He was fifth as a freshman, fourth as a sophomore. Uh, and the junior is now up to 126, where he ranks number one uh, in the state with an 82-9 and nine career record. Number two is Josh Jones from Saucon Valley. He's the one half of the Jones brothers from, from Saucon. Uh, he's a junior. He was a state fifth last year as a sophomore. He was a state qualifier as a freshman. And number three, R- Ryan McGuire from Notre Dame Green Ponds. So the second uh, District 11 guy and, and actually the third Southeast region guy uh, all back to back in 126 pounds. Ryan McGuire was eighth in the state last year in his second trip to the state tournament. So uh, 126, another weight where we have a ton of I mean, I'm just looking at the state qualifiers here. Uh, 15, we have 15 or 16 state wow. qualifiers all in, in 126. So uh, definitely a deep weight class. Yeah. And uh very deep, and that southeast region, if it stays like this, could be a pretty fun regional to watch, huh? I, I agree with you. And um, 132 is, is the one and only Gavin Teasdale. Uh, 122 and 0 in his career. He's not lost a single match in his high school career. Uh, Gavin comes in ranked number one at 132 pounds. He's a three time state champion. He's going to Penn State. Pretty much the the top ranked wrestler in the state of Pennsylvania right now. Uh, Gavin is number one. Cole Roan is number two. Cole Roan was a state runner-up last year for Benton. Uh, he's a three-time state qual. I'm sorry, two-time state qualifier. He's gotten much better in his career. He was 19 and 15 as a freshman, 29 and 13 as a sophomore, and then uh, was a state runner-up last year at 38 and five. Tanner Ball from Peckway Valley is number three, uh, also a two-time state qualifier. He was seventh last year in the state, uh, and Tanner Ball has that nice one-two punch for for Peckway Valley. Now, do you think that this weight class clears out at the once we get to the state tournament or the the postseason, and that uh, and the guys are are moving away from Teasdale to try to win a state title, or do you I'm think not, it's? I'm not sure. Gavin stays at 132. I, I could see him going down to 126 eventually. Um, especially, I don't know around power rate or not, because um, Joey Silva uh from from florida is going to be wrestling at power eight and he's at 132 pounds so i don't know if if gavin stays at 32 to wrestle him or if he goes down so i, I don't know if it's necessary people fleeing from 132 uh okay moving away from teasdale wherever yeah i mean yeah obviously you're gonna have some wrestlers moving away wrestlers that have a legitimate shot at winning a state title um they may move away from from Teasdale. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's that's always going to happen. You'll see that a lot of times. And and you know, whether it's a Teasdale or not, if it's a returning state champion or someone who's who's heavily favored, you'll see. I, I don't see it being any different this year. Okay. 138 pounds. So we talked about Tanner Ball from Peckway Valley. Uh, number one in the state at 138 pounds is Gabe Miller. And this is a guy that, Eric, I know he impressed both of us uh, out in Fargo. Um, he, he knocked off a few highly ranked wrestlers in the nation out there. He was third in the state last year, um, and that was his second trip to the, the state tournament. He's a junior from Peckway Valley. He's 84 and 11 in his career. Gabe Miller is one and Caleb Dowling from St. Joe's Academy out in District 6. He is number two. Those two wrestled twice last year in the state tournament with Gabe Miller winning two close matches. Do you remember those matches, Eric? They were they were good bouts. I don't remember them seeing them specifically. I knew that they had wrestled and that they were, they were tight bouts, but uh, off the top of my head, no, I don't remember seeing it in person. Yeah, they were they were definitely tight bouts. Uh, Gabe Miller won both of those, uh, but they were they could have gone either way. Uh, number three at 138 pounds is John Rocco Cazales. Uh, I could say that name all day. I love that name. <laughs> um, 
Rocco Cazales. He's number three in the state. He's from Quaker Valley, so another Quaker Valley guy. He was sixth in the state last year, uh, and he's a junior now. So uh, a lot of depth here at 138 as well. Yeah, uh, as you said, we get our first uh, St. Joe's kid in there. Uh, we, we've talked a little bit about them, that they look like a program that's going to be churning out some uh, some really competitive guys in the, the next couple years. Moving up to 145 pounds, the one and only Cole Matthews, who I, I think is is definitely eyeing for uh, to replace Mason Beckman on the college podcast eventually. <laughs> uh, Matthews is is really really good. He was, uh, although he's he was a state champion as a freshman, third as a sophomore, and a runner up last year, uh, runner up to Max Mirren, and, and probably one of the best finals matches uh, of the year. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> he's run into some pretty tough brackets in Hershey the past couple of years. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he has. Uh, and, and Cole's a lot of fun to, to watch, and, and he's up at 145 pounds. He's 130 and 12 in his career. He's going to Pitt, and he's ranked number one in the state at 145 pounds. Number two behind him is Carnell Andrews, who uh, is a, a three-time state qualifier, one-time state medals. He was fifth last year, um, and he's from Bishop Court. Number three is the second half of the Jones brother from Saucon Valley. This is Jason Jones. Uh, he's a Keystone College commitment. Jason is a, a three-time state qualifier. Never made it on the podium yet, but he, he's he's pretty good. He's 120 and 43 in his career. Yeah, I like his chances of uh, of getting on the podium this year, definitely. Moving up to 152 pounds, one of my favorite weight classes for a variety of reasons, but one of them is because Just McCoy is there. Uh, Just McCoy from Chestnut Ridge, who we got to see at Media Day. He looks big. He looks strong. Uh, I think he's he's poised for a repeat uh, as a state champion. Last year, he was a state champion, 145 pounds. He's a three-time state medalist. He was sixth as a freshman, seventh as a sophomore, and, of course, a champion last year. Number two, though, is the one and only – Thane Lawrence. Thane, I bring the pain Lawrence. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can you can cite Jeff Upson on that one right there. Uh, Thane was a third-place finisher last year behind Max Murray and Cole Matthews, uh, and he's from Frazier, who is in its second year of, uh, of existence in wrestling, so really cool to see him competing for a school like Frazier, 37-6 and six in his career. And number three, all the way up from my gosh, where did Tyler Griffiths come from? He, he <laughs> 152 pounds. What did he? Who did he eat? I don't know. He's he's awfully big. Uh, you got to wonder if it, how long he's gonna gonna stay up in this range. But you're right. It's definitely a fun weight class when you've got McCoy, Thane Lawrence, who not only did he do well last year, but then opened some eyes at the Super 32, and then you got Tyler Griffiths. I mean, what a trio there. Who who ranked Tyler Griffiths at 152 pounds? Who told you he was going to be up 20 pounds? Uh, track wrestling or what? Now you, I mean, now you got got me wondering here. Yeah, I'm, I mean that's crazy. I mean that's like a, a Jared McGill type jump there. Um, Griff is going all the way. He was a, a state runner up last year. Yes, at hundred at a, at one hundred twenty, hundred thirty two pounds. So twenty pounds. I mean that's a, that's a pretty good jump. Uh, I, yeah, I would I would say so. I, I'd I'd fact check that, Eric. Make sure you got your. You're, you're uh, making me doubt myself here, Jeff. I mean. I'm sorry, but I hate to put the pressure on you. But hey, I you know I you know what Eric, I trust you. You obviously you you put hard work into these rankings. I, I think. did, but now you you got me nervous, man. I got to look this up and and see if I'm if I'm crazy Don't, here. Well, I can answer that without I'm crazy t- telling you whether you Wait, ranked no, him at the like, right. No, he was at 38 last year. Okay, oh, you're right. I'm sorry, 38. He was at 38 last year. Okay, so that makes me feel a little better. Um, yeah, so are you sure he was at 38 last year? Uh, no, he that, was not. He was, he was not at 38 last year, Eric, because 138 was Max Mirren, Cole Matthews, and Thane Lawrence. No, you're right. It, it, part of the season he was. But, yeah, he, he was at 32. He, at he, was 50, at 30. he is listed at 52 on track wrestling. All right, all right. He was a state runner up last year at 132 pounds, though. Right. Okay. I, I thought he was up 20 pounds. And he's, I, I guess, I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll see him. I, I have a feeling we're going to see him drop. Yeah, I would I, think I, so. But regardless, 152 is stacked. We've got five state medalists there, uh, a handful of state qualifiers. So, yeah, 152 is, is really fun. And, and speaking of that, 160 is, is another one chock full of 12 state qualifiers and three state medals. Edmund Ruth from Susquehanna Township leads the way. He was a state champion last year, undefeated. 
uh, already is better than his brother, big brother Ed, in his high school career. Uh, Edmund, 71 and 10 in his career at Susquehanna Township. He plans to return to 160. Uh, I'm sorry, move up to 160 from, from a year ago. Caleb Clymer from Northwestern Lehigh is second. He's a two time state medalist. He was six as a sophomore and third last year. He's 94 and 24 in his career. And then Caleb Hetrick, he's going to Clarion next year. He's a two time state medalist, eighth as a sophomore and seventh last year as a junior. So uh, definitely a deep weight class at 160 pounds. It is a deep one. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't want to bet on anybody taking out Edmund Ruth. But uh, yeah, there's certainly a lot of talent here as well. Yeah, he he just gets it done. Edmund does, and he just uh, seems to get better every every year. Um, you know, he was eighth last or two years ago as a freshman uh, in Triple A, then goes to Double A and wins a state title. So yeah, he's he's only getting better. Uh, 170 pounds. Another guy who's definitely under the radar. On, on the national scene, uh, if not the the Pennsylvania scene, is Creighton Edsel from Wyoming. Uh, he's 116 and 18 in his career. He was a state champion last year. Only had one loss. He was 37 and one. It was a second state medal. He was fifth as a sophomore. Uh, the guy's tough. He's he's a hard nosed wrestler. I like the way he 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 battles. Uh, and number two is Robert Patrick. So two time state runner up. Uh, you know, everyone knows the story about Robert and, and sort of, you know, how he bounced back from finishing second as a freshman, was a qualifier as a sophomore. Uh, he was not able to get over the hump with, with Edmund Ruth down at 152, but we saw him. He was another guy we saw at media day, and he looked big and strong. And, um, you know, this this could be Robert's year. Yeah, he pro- might even start the year out at 182 uh, and then uh, drop to 170. And, yeah, I – Edsel was a guy that, uh, as you said, kind of has, as much as you can, flown under the radar for a PA state champ. I don't know if that's just that he hasn't been in as many of the the national big name tournaments, or, or why he hasn't quite gotten that gotten that love. But uh, I mean, certainly a guy that that should get that attention. And then, yeah, Robert Patrick second uh, certainly could be a contender there. And then Jared McGill from Chestnut Ridge, who you referenced earlier, made that big jump last year. Uh, kind of kept the weight the same this year. Yeah, and we talked to him at, and at me today, and it was funny because Jared, he was 132 as a freshman, then went all the way up to 170 as a sophomore, and he was like, I didn't know how to wrestle uh, a heavyweight. You know, I didn't know how to wrestle up a weight at 170. He said, I was still wrestling like a 132 pound. He said, I had to learn how to how to wrestle at, a, at such a higher weight. Even though he was big and strong, uh, it, it was a learning curve for him, and I think now as a junior, he's returning to a weight that he's comfortable at. I think we're going to see Jared do well here, but uh, talk about a deep weight class. And I mean, both Robert and Jared are, are division one uh, commitments. Uh, Robert's going to Virginia, Jared's uh, verbal to army. So, uh, and Jared's a two time state medalist. He was six as a freshman and fourth as uh, a sophomore last year. So if those three do end up staying at 170, it's going to be a, a dog fight for, for the number one spot. Yeah, that would be, Boy, I don't know uh, which way to go there. Uh, as we've said, uh, you know, Robert Patrick has been there, and I've I've talked to him a couple of times about what it would mean to to finally get over that hump. But uh, you got Creighton Edsel sitting there that's already done it. Yeah, right, absolutely, and and you know you have to give him the nod, uh, just knowing the fact that he he has he has won a, a state title and he's he's you know he's reached that feat. So it, it'll be fun to watch, and that's that's what we we love about wrestling. Uh, one eighty two, another one. I, I sound like a broken record, but look at this. We have five wrestlers here that were on the podium last year, uh, leading the charge is Dalton Group from Susquehanna. Uh, this senior was a two time state medalist, three time state qualifier. He was. Seven Seventh as a sophomore last year, he was a runner-up, um, and he's he's going to Pitt Johnstown. That was a big pickup for for Coach Pacora. He comes in ranked number one at 182. Behind him, though, is Julian Goring from Fort LaBeouf, who's a junior, uh, got his first state medal last year. He was fourth in the state. Uh, was a qualifier as a freshman. And Julian's a guy who we, we saw down at Super 32, and him and Dalton Group wrestled, and that was a, a really good match. It was a tight match. Both of those wrestled uh, very, very hard with Dalton Group coming out on top. But then you throw in Gage Garcia from Southern Columbia, uh, one of our top incoming freshmen last year. Uh, Gage is, is a tremendous football player. He, in fact, he's probably going to end up going Division One in football. Um, his father, if you remember, uh, Mike Garcia from Mount Carmel, uh, Mount, Mount Carmel was a, a three times state champion and went to, to Bucknell. But uh, Gage Garcia is super, super tough. 
uh, and, and I think wrestling is his second sport uh, as well. And he was and, fifth well, he got a, he got a late start last year, if you remember. He, yeah, uh, broke, uh, broke had his, his ankle. ankle. Yeah, and and obviously came on really well after that. Twenty two and three, fifth in the state. And it wouldn't surprise me to see him move up from that three uh, ranking that, you know, he has the, the potential, even though it, it isn't his main sport to, to be a state champion. Yeah, he's I mean, he's just nat- he's just gifted. I mean, he's naturally just an athlete uh, and he's he's really good at wrestling, too. Uh, that helps. It's in his it's in his blood. It's in his pedigree. Uh, so Gage is definitely one of the guys that I think could could sneak on uh, and, and get a, a, a state championship this year, possibly. But he's going to have a, a tough road, especially at 182. Moving up to 195 is is definitely an interesting uh matchup here because you got gavin hoffman a two-time state champion a world bronze medalist um and gavin is 131 and nine in his career we all know his story he was a two-time state champion was six as a freshman but then you got cody mulligan cody mulligan is second in the state behind hoffman he was a state champion last year um he's 127 and 16 gavin hoffman's going to ohio state cody mulligan's going to edinburgh both these guys are super, super tough, highly respected in the nation. Um, and then, you know what, just just for the heck of it, let's throw in Anthony Walters uh, at number three. He, he's uh, 109 and 17 in his career from Bishop McGork. He's going to Drexel, three-time state medalist, two-time state finalist, two-time state runner-up. Um, and then, you know what, let's, let's go the extra distance and go to number four, Dominic Fundy. You know, he was also a state runner-up last year. Uh, he was He's 75 and 12 in his career. He's a junior. So, yeah, I would say this is a pretty pretty tough weight class. What a crazy weight. I mean, you, you got a, a, a guy who finished second last year, fin- is, is ranked fourth, and, and a guy that has twice finished second is ranked third. I mean, wow, and two state champs. Yeah, I mean, it's not like either of them you can really argue and say that, that one of those guys should be higher. I mean, that's just a loaded weight class. And I don't really see anyone going away. I, I, I haven't don't... seen Fundy. I don't know if he's a, a 95er for the long haul, but the top three I would definitely think are. I, I mean, Cody Mulligan was at 182 for Super 32, uh, which which surprised a lot of folks. Um, I would not be surprised, though, to see Hoffman, Mulligan, and Walters all stay at 95 for postseason. Fundy, yeah, like you said, I haven't seen him, so I, I'm not sure, but he is still young, so I wouldn't be surprised if he did hit a little bit of a growth spurt uh, to go up to 195. But if all four of these guys stay there, look out. That's that's going to be a fun weight class. Yeah, because then you got a couple more state place winners below them. Yeah, so right. the, the top six guys have, have all medaled already and, you know, medaled, they were high on the podium. Sure. And that's, I, I can't wait for that. And it doesn't get much, much worse up at 220 pounds. You got Josiah Jones, the senior from Bishop McCourt. Uh, him and Anthony Waters are both sort of in the same boat in the sense that they finished uh, a state runner ups the last two years. Uh, Josiah uh, battled some injuries throughout his career. He's going to Oklahoma. He's number one in the state. He's, but he's been there before. He's been ranked number one uh, several times before, just has come up short twice. Uh, and number two is Dominic DeLuca from Derry area who we, we got to see both those wrestlers up at uh, media day and Dominic DeLuca is, is tall. He's about six, eight. Uh, <laughs> he's huge. And he was third last year in the state. Uh, he's only a junior. I like his upside. He doesn't have to cut a whole lot to get to 220. Um, in fact, his, his teammates there were saying that uh, he, he may, they may have or may not have called him fat, which he's like, <laughs> I can still hear you. Uh, uh, you're going to pay for this later. He's right? not that tall. He can still he's hear not that. Yeah. Right. Although when I was holding a camera up, my arm felt like it was going to fall off because I had to like put it to the, my tippy toes to even reach him. Um, so yeah, he's pretty tough. I like his upside. And at number three, we have Clay Verbanic from Cambridge Springs, who really came onto his own last year. Uh, and he was a uh, state fourth place finisher. He was forty two and five on the season. It was his first time to the state tournament, uh, but he finished it uh, in top four, which is very impressive. He's eighty two and twenty seven in his career. So look at that progression: eighteen and fourteen as a freshman. 22 and 8 and then 42 and 5. I mean, you talk a guy that talk about a guy that's really progressing from year to year. 
Uh, I mean, if that trend continues, look out. Yeah, absolutely. He he could because there's not a whole lot more to go from 42 and five and and fourth in the state. Right. It, it, absolutely. I think you know he could definitely be a guy who who finishes top three, top two in the state this year. Uh, at 285, Danny Scheib from Tri Valley is is ranked number one. He was a state runner up last year to Toby Cahill. He's a two time state medalist. He's only wrestled for two seasons. He was injured the entire sophomore season, so he finished eight as a freshman second as a junior uh 73 and 17 in his career definitely a guy who's going to fly under the radar maybe a little bit um but he's got some talented guys in in, in tow there waiting for him is bishop mccoy from Southside. he's a senior and he's 83 and 31 in his career he was fifth last year in the state and then bobby gregory from mercer area he talk about trajectory uh a trajectory here he was 12 and 14 his freshman year he was a state qualifier last year, 33 and 8. So, uh, yeah, definitely a guy who's making strides. Yeah, and you see that sometimes uh, uh, these bigger guys, you know, if you're starting as a, as a freshman at heavyweight or 220 even, you know, that's a pretty tough ask to, to say, hey, you know, you're, you're 14, 15 years old, get out there and wrestle a guy that weighs 260 pounds and see how you can do. Even if you're that weight, it's it's tough to to match up physically at that age for a lot of these guys. So as they mature and get more experience, uh, those wins uh, start to come a little easier. And so, yeah, it's great to see a guy stick with it whenever he has those struggles early on and then turn those records around and if you look down through our rankings here you'll see a lot of those guys uh there's one guy in here that was even three and 22 as a freshman and is now in the state rankings i mean that talk about a progression yeah that's that's very impressive um that's it's yeah, wow. And and you get you just got to give them some some credit for having the the gumption to stick through it cuz I mean that that's a tough season to go through and to to stick it out and come back that sophomore year and improve and then can even get even better. It, it's great to see that the, that a kid, you know, you you hear all about the millennials and and kind of the uh, you know, want to quit when things get rough. These guys prove that that's that's not the case with everybody. Yeah, snowflakes melt real quick, I heard. Um I would have quit. Absolutely. If I was three and 22, uh, I would have quit. I mean, I, I could, I could barely make the varsity lineup on central Dolphin. So, uh, I, you know, there was definitely times when I thought about quitting. Um, but as our friend Tristan Warren would say, yeah, but that's just double a, you know, the, the, de- Ouch. the, du- the depth there is just not, it's just not the Where, same. Where's so, my man, uh, Mason Beckman to stick up for me here uh, with the double, the double a guys. I don't know. He's probably wrong. He's probably getting trapped in a bag somewhere trying to wrestle his way out. I don't know. <laughs> wow. I'm, I, hey, I'm going to spend, oh. I'm going to spend all weekend with him so I can, I can say he's, it now. Yeah. I, um, I think you're in trouble this weekend. I can't wait. Uh, good. Bring it. Um, Let's move up to the big leagues here at the AAA. Uh, let's let's start at 106 pounds, and the number one ranked guy in the state preseason is Curtis Phipps from Norwin. Uh, Curtis was the seventh place finisher last year uh, from Norwin, and that was a deep weight in the Southwest region. All four. Uh, guys that qualified for the state tournament ended up getting a medal, um, and, and Curtis Phipps was the the regional champion, uh, but. The guy who he beat in the finals, Ryan Sullivan, was the state runner-up. So these guys were just battling back and forth. But I'm pretty sure we're going to see Phipps back down to 106 this year, whether it's the first week or or soon thereafter. Number two is is Max Mendez from Council Rock South, a guy who I really thought made huge strides last year. He was only 26 and 11, uh, wasn't even a regional qualifier as a freshman. But then he's 44 and 10. Last year was a state qualifier. Uh, I like the way he wrestles at, at that Council Rock South program. And then Josh Stahl, another uh, District 1 guy from Quakertown. He's a state qualifier last year. He's 63 and 19 in his career. So, again, 106, very, very difficult to rank, uh, especially not knowing where guys are going to be. If you're a Council, Council Rock South lightweight, do you automatically become a, a state contender? Man, it just seems like they always have somebody in, in the lightweights that uh, you know is competing for, for state championships. Yeah, I mean, there's programs around like that that you just uh, naturally being a part of a, a lightweight program like Counts Rock South, you're just, uh, you know, just so happens that you had uh, five brothers of Rappos <laughs> that were all really, really good. And you're like, oh, I guess I got to be really good, too. Like, I would be letting the fan base down if I, I wasn't good. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, you see that year after year. I remember Cumber Valley was always one that always had a tough lightweight group and, um, Reynolds is, is always tough. And, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that you're going to see, see some good things out of Max Mendez this year at, at 113 pounds. The guys I just mentioned from the Southwest region, number one in the state is Ryan Sullivan from Shaler. Uh, Ryan was a state runner up last year, um, at 106 pounds to Doug Zapp. He was a regional runner up last year as well to, to Curtis Phipps, but he comes in ranked number one as a state runner up 51 and nine in his career. And Frankie Benora from Moon, a senior, uh, he was a state fifth place finisher also out of the Southwest region. He comes in ranked number two. At number three, Christian Fisher from Mifflin County. He was eighth in the state last year, 52 and 14 in his career. Uh, he comes in ranked number three. I think we're going to see some some guys end up dropping down to 113 and making that a, a really deep weight. Yeah, not bad right now. You got a second, a fifth, and an eighth coming back. So obviously some talent there and then a, a couple of state qualifiers behind them. But as you said, probably we'll see some uh, 20-pounders dropping down there a little bit later on in the season. And one of those guys could be returning state champion Doug Zapp from downtown West, although I do think he's going to end up staying at 120 to help transition himself into college wrestling where he's going to be going to Penn. Uh, Doug is a very, uh, very high caliber wrestler. I like I like him a lot. I like his upside. He was 45 and two last year, was a state champion for downtown West, uh, 109 and 24 in his career. But here's here's a dark horse. And the reason I say that is because it's his first year in the PIAA is Shane Hanson Ashworth from now he's at Council Rock South. He was at Malvern Prep, um, where he was just absolutely dominant in the way he wrestled. He was 42 and 8 uh, as a freshman, was a national prep runner up. He was 38 and 8 last year, was national prep third. He's 80 and 16 in his career, and he is now at Council Rock South. So talk about lightweights and, and the, the way that the, the Council Rock South lightweights are. Shane Hansen Ashworth is, is definitely going to add. I mean, he's he's got two years of, of time to, to really make some noise for himself on the PIAA level. Yeah, and, you know, as someone who doesn't get to see national preps very often, that's that's great to see. That'll be somebody that I'll get to, to see a little bit more of in the PIAA. And as you said, a, a great workout partner there in the Council Rock South room. Yeah, he's he's done very well for himself. I've seen him at the Escape the Rock uh, last couple of years, and uh, he was a, I saw him in his youth days as well. He, he's a very very tough uh, wrestler, accomplished. So he comes in number two, but number three, uh, and I had a, and really this is this weight is just ridiculous. Uh, the top eight at one twenty all finished top eight in the state last year. Um, Logan Macri, I have at number three from Cannon Mac. He's going to Chattanooga. He's 113 and 28 in his career. He's going to States every year, but last year was the first year he actually came away with the medal. He took fifth at 120 pounds. Um, it was, I had a hard time between Logan Macri and Ed Scott. Ed Scott was third last year in the state. Uh, he was 39 and two from Dubois. He's only a sophomore though. And I think Logan, just, uh, just the fact that he's been there before and he's a senior and he's been in a lot of big matches. I gave him the nod over Ed Scott. Who's at four. I can see that. Uh, I'm a big Ed Scott fan. Uh, I, I really like his, his toughness and I, I wouldn't bet against him too much. So I might've flip flopped with you there, but I certainly can't argue with it. Uh, I mean, as you said, Logan Macri is a proven guy and I, I don't think you'll, you'll get too many people arguing too much there. Uh, I think they're, they're pretty close in, in terms of, of where they're going to finish up. Moving up to 126 pounds, uh, two guys that saw each other in the state finals last year come in ranked number one and two. At number one, we have Sam Hillegas from North Hills. He's an undefeated state champion. Uh, he's 43-0 and zero in his career, won the Powerade last year, won the state tournament, beat Lewis Newell three times last year. Uh, Louis Newell is a two-time state runner-up, three-time state mouse, 115-19 and 19 in his career, and he's going to pit. Um, so definitely two guys that have been back and forth, back and forth. Um, and I don't know whether we're going to see either of them drop, uh, Sammy, we saw him, uh, wrestling at 126 pounds down at super 32. I still think he's growing into that weight at number three. We have Chris Wright from central dolphin, 129 and 24 
also a three-time state medalist. He was seventh uh, as a freshman. He actually beat Louis Newell in that that seventh place match. So that's that's an interesting little tidbit there. Um, and then he was fourth as a, a sophomore last year. He was also fourth as a junior. He's going to Ryder. So uh, two, two or three really tough wrestlers, all all very capable of of doing well for themselves. Yeah, you could even argue four here. I mean, four guys that were top four last year, and then a, another guy at number five who was a, a medalist. So another weight where, uh, you know, you can kind of shake them up a little bit here. I mean, obviously, Sam Hilligas, uh unbeaten so far, so you got to put him at the top, but not a, a whole lot maybe separating the next couple. No, I, I agree with you. It's going to be tight, especially uh, the top five there. At 132 pounds, another guy who's been dominant is is a two-time state champion, Julian Klebo from Northampton, 83 in his career. Um, he's just done it all, really. He's won basically everything. He comes in ranked number one at 132. But behind him is uh, the giant killer, the giant slayer, as Ryan Anderson, the guy who uh, bumped up to 138. Uh, for Super 32 because you didn't want to stop eating cupcakes. And How do you know what weight to rank him at? I, he could be at 52 with Tyler Griffiths. Well, he, well yeah, he could. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's, he's registered to compete at the Ironman at 132, so that's why I, I had him there at 132. But, but then again, he could move up. He, he could just say to Jeff Karam. Just go up and win it, you know, hey, like, uh, hey, like at Super 32. Hey, Coach, yeah, I, you know, I don't really want to shed these last two pounds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and, and go at 138, uh, if that's okay with you. I'll wrestle off if you want. <laughs> so Ryan Anderson, uh, who made a lot of noise when he won the Super 32 belt uh, a few months back, and that was kind of unexpected. In fact, he even said he he wasn't expecting to win the, the championship, but he did. He's 51-10 and 10 in his career. Um, he's only a, a one-time state medalist because he missed weight as a freshman. Uh, he was 20-5 and five as a freshman last year, 31-5, and, and and finished third in the state. Behind him at, at uh, third is Andrew Wirt, uh, who's a senior from Central Dolphin. He was a two-time state medalist. When he was at Trinity uh, in Dubway, he finished fifth. And then last year, he was sixth in the state. Uh, he's going to Army next year. So a lot of depth here at 132 as well because you look down the line and, and there's a lot of talent. Yeah, definitely uh, a lot of talent. Uh, I think Klebov is, you know, kind of separated himself at the top. And then, you know, for me, it might even be a, a tier of Klebov and then Anderson. I don't know. Uh, do you think Wirt is in that, that same mix with Anderson? I mean, he just looks so good at Super 32. Yeah, I mean, on his feet, Anderson's definitely favored, but uh, Wirt's very tough from from uh, the mat. And, and Wirt, if, you, you know, if you've watched the national rankings, he's been – in the national rankings for the last two years, top 20, uh, you know, despite not um, being that high on the podium in Pennsylvania, he has done very well for himself. So I, I don't know if I necessarily say he's he's in the mix, but he's definitely, um, you know, he's not far behind Ryan Anderson. Okay, they, uh, I agree with that. Uh, but, yeah, that's just kind of the way I see it. Is, is Klebov at one step, Anderson another, and then maybe uh, a little tighter after that with, with Wirt and Gold and some of those guys? Now, 138 is a very interesting weight class because there's so many unknowns here that I, I need to talk about. But number one in the state is Jared Papsy from Bethlehem Catholic. Now, this is a guy who was definitely probably uh, not expected to be where he's at now in the sense that he was 9-8 and eight as a freshman, 28-12 and 12 as a sophomore. Didn't even make it to regionals. He was, he was sixth in the district at District 11. Last year, though, he's 37-15, finishes fourth. He's a gamer. I mean, he's only gotten better every single match I've watched him. Um, and I, I really do think that, you know, Pepsi is worthy of the number one ranking, despite the fact that Noah Levitt is, is number two. And Noah Levitt's a two-time state medalist, three-time uh, state qualifier, 105 and 28 in his career. He's going to Bucknell. But Pepsi's going to Duke. Uh, Pepsi's tough. I, really, 38's open, wide open in my, in my uh, eyes. Yeah, I can definitely see that. And, I mean, it's hard to argue against Bethlehem Catholic and, and the results that they've produced over the past decade. I mean, obviously, if you're in that room and, and you're working hard, uh, you, you have a chance to improve because of the caliber of competition you're getting, the coaching. I mean, it's it's just an incredible run that they've been on. And uh, a guy like Jared Papsy is, is kind of a, a result of that, that, you know, he just keeps working hard, wrestling against the, the talent in that room and keeps improving. 
another super unknown person here is Jackson Henson from Waynesburg Central. And a lot of people are going to say, um, excuse me, who? who? Who are you talking about? Well, the name Henson should sound familiar, especially you, Eric. Um, it's Sammy Henson, uh, really good wrestler from Clemson, a uh, guy that Eric may or may not have almost wrestled uh, <laughs> back when he wrestled. Uh, Jackson Henson is the son of West Virginia head coach Sammy Henson, uh, and Jackson is now at Waynesburg Central. He's a senior. Uh, he uh, and his brother Wyatt Henson uh, are both at Waynesburg Central right now. Um, and I failed to mention this when we talked about transfers because I hadn't had confirmation yet um, that they were there. I had rumblings and um, and I just sort of slipped my mind. But Jackson Henson, who's competed a lot uh, all across the nation, he's a two-time West Virginia State champion. I can't find any results for him wrestling in high school last year. Um, if someone has knows anything different, I think he only wrestled in like open tournaments and freestyle. Um, but I have him as 82 and two in his career and just two years of wrestling, uh, winning the West Virginia state tournament twice. So a guy who's sort of unknown in the sense that, you know, he hasn't wrestled a ton of Pennsylvania wrestlers. I did see him down at super 32 this year and Colton Camacho from, uh, Franken regional beat him, uh, and that, that bout, but Henson, I, really unknown here yeah and and that'll be interesting to see you know obviously we're a pennsylvania based wrestling show so we we love to to talk about the the greatness of, of pennsylvania wrestling and it's interesting to see somebody come in from another state who has done really well and then see how they perform here and, and how they stack up yeah I, i'm interested and curious to see how he does and especially his brother wyatt uh you know being a freshman i'm sure you know he he's pretty good too if you're you're father's sammy henson you're you're obviously you know got a head start in that sense um but yeah it's gonna be interesting to see and waynesburg really is putting together a nice little team there uh down in green county they're they're gonna they're gonna have a uh, really tough guys to route their lineup uh 145 pounds sammy sasso probably the one of the biggest names in pennsylvania wrestling he's 128 and nine in his career three-time state medalist uh state champion last year was 39 and 0 in his uh, campaign as a junior moves up to 145 this year although I he is starting up at 152 but I do believe he'll be down at 145 he comes in ranked number one he's going to Ohio State everyone knows Sammy uh number two is Luke Kemmerer from Hempfield area who's going to Pitt and Luke is is a guy that some people will say well that's kind of weird you ranked him second but he was sixth in the state last year and, and two guys that finished ahead of him are ranked below him well That's true, but Luke was third in the state as a sophomore, um, and last year, unbeknownst to a lot of people, he wrestled the entire state tournament uh, with an injury. So uh, I'm not saying that that's to to attribute to that, but clearly Luke Kemmer is a guy who who I think is, is poised to have a good season this year as a senior. Yeah, and then another guy that's poised to have a good season, uh, somebody that wasn't able to wrestle at all last year, Ryan Vulak of Pope John Paul II. Yeah, Ryan Vulak was ineligible last year after transferring from North Penn to Pope John Paul. He was 41-7 and seven as a freshman, finished eighth in the state. Super, super tough kid. Uh, that year he was off. He, he was wrestling a lot of different tournaments. He was competing uh, at a high level and got a lot of national attention. But uh, 145 pounds, there's a lot of depth here. We have about six wrestlers with state medals already to their name, six or seven uh, guys already that have state medals. And, of course, state champion Sammy Sasso. I mean, obviously, I think it's Sammy Sasso and then the rest. Um, I do think Kemmer and Vulak will, will, will battle. Same with Zach Ortman and Seth Colino, all Division One commits. So uh, 45 should shake out to be a good weight. Yeah, that should be a fun one. Anytime you have that kind of uh, pedigree, the, the guys that are going on to these big-name uh, programs, Division One programs, uh, makes for a fun tournament. So much like 138, 152 is wide open. When I'm talking about wide open, I mean – it's anybody's game here until people start dropping and falling into place. Uh, at 152, the number one ranked wrestler is a sophomore at a Bald Eagle area, Gage McClanahan. Um, and he was seventh in the state last year. He's 33 and seven in his career. Very, very accomplished youth wrestler. Uh, and he did not disappoint last year for Bald Eagle. I, I, right now, he's, he's the only state medalist 
ranked at 152. So it's hard to, to say that he, he's not the number one ranked guy. And at number two, another uh, sophomore is Clayton Ulrey from Lower Dolphin. He's a sophomore, was a state qualifier last year, actually won the, the South Central Regional last year. He's 30 and six in his career. So back to back, you have two sophomores that really are, could make a name for themselves, especially at 152 pounds if, if you know that weight stays sort of the way it is. At number three, yet another Bethlehem Catholic wrestler, that's Luca Frenzy. Um, guy who's only 28 and 18 in his career, but again, that's a Bethlehem Catholic schedule, uh, which is one of the best in the state. He was a, a state qualifier last year for uh, Bethlehem Catholic, and he comes in number three. Yeah, talk about how strange things happen. You know, you get some weights where you are a state finalist and can't break into the top three. Here, uh, a state qualifier uh, gets you number two. Uh, so, Interesting weight, pretty wide open, I would think. I mean, so many guys that are, are state qualifiers, regional qualifiers, kind of battling it out here. Uh, it looks like, yeah, it, it's really going to be hard to, to put your finger on right now as to, to who the favorite's going to be at the end of the year. At 160 pounds, again, we see a clumping of, of some state medalists. Number one is Carter Storaki from Cathedral Prep. A guy we are big uh, and high on. Carter's just, he's amazing the way he wrestles, uh, especially we saw him in freestyle. He's a state runner up last year to Cameron Coy. He's 72 and 10 in his career. He's only a junior. Uh, he was eighth in the state as a freshman. He's, he's really tough. But then you have Brock Godson, uh, who I'm also hearing is actually going to be down at 52 um, instead of, of, of 60. So Brock could easily slide into the number one spot in the state at 152 pounds if he is dropping there. Um, Brock was fifth in state last year. He, he and Carter had a, a really tough match uh, at the state tournament. He's 91 and 37 in his career. And then uh, at number three, another state medalist from Scranton is William Veneski. And he was fifth in the state last year for, for Scranton. He's 104 and 23 in his career. Yeah, this is a one, uh, as you said, Carter Shiraki, uh, especially at Fargo, you know, you could just see the, the development of him and the, the, the college coaches just kind of drooling on over him. And I, I think that's, that's what you're going to see this year is really the Carter continue to improve and really separate himself from the rest of the field at uh, 160. At 170 is Trent Hydley. Um, he's the number one ranked wrestler in the state. He was undefeated last year and route to his first state championship. He's a two-time state medalist, was a runner-up as a sophomore, champion as a junior, 112 and 11 in his career. He's going down to North Carolina State where he's going to join his brother, Hayden. So the Hydley brothers are always doing well. Now, 170, number two is, is Garrett Ninehouse, but he's actually going to be at 160. In fact, he's, he's the top seed at the Cumber Valley Kickoff Classic, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Garrett Ninehouse comes in number two at 70, uh, when in reality, he's actually going to be at 60. So there's where we kind of throw in kind of, you know, the, the issues <laughs> this of preseason. This is why you were banging your head this against is, the wall. This is why I was banging my head through a steel door. Uh, same with Zach Hartman, who comes in right number three. So I hate to give you a preview of weights, <laughs> that rankings that they're not going to be at, but Zach Hartman's surprise is actually going to be at 60. Godson's going to be at 52. So uh, disregard that. But they're all pretty good, even if, if you go. A lot of good guys here. A lot, a lot, hey, Eric, a lot <laughs> of good guys here. A lot of good guys. Uh, let's move up to 182, uh, a weight that's uh, pretty deep. And, and Josh Stillings, who I know for sure, uh, is at 182 pounds because his, his mother's told me so. So I know that. Um, 182 is Josh Stillings. He's ranked number one in the state. He was a state runner up last year. Uh, he's a 120 and 26 in his career. He's going to Drexel. Uh, really, really just solid wrestler. Really even better person. Just a great kid. Uh, number two is Tim Wallace. He was third in the state last year from Albert Gallatin, and this is a guy who sort of flew under the radar a little bit. Um, he was a regional champion, actually, as a, a sophomore and came out and, and took third last year as a, a junior. He's a 102 and 17 going to Kent State. And Luigi Yates from Cathedral Prep is the number third ranked wrestler, and he was a state eighth place finisher last year. Yeah, some interesting stuff here. As you said, Josh Stillings is a guy that just continued to improve, and I know you've you've followed closely over the years. So it'll be interesting to see if he can get a, his first state title uh, in his senior year. Moving up to 195, a guy I was very high on last year was Cole Urbis from State College. In fact, when we talked to this uh, one of the State College coaches at Media Day, I asked where he was, and they, ah, he's he's practicing and eating. Uh, he's moving up to 195. He's very very tough. He was third in the state last year. 
um, at, at a, a tough 182 weight. He's now the number two ranked wrestler, though, in the state. Luke McGonigal from Clearfield uh, is number one. He was a state runner up last year. I don't know if you remember him and Tim Wallace wrestled in semis, and they went back and forth, and the ref sort of maybe botched the the call on, on who won that. Uh, but Luke McGonigal was a state runner up last year, and he, I believe he's going to be up at 195 with the possibility of dropping down to 182. Uh, but Cole Urbis, from all accounts, is going to be staying up at 195. He's just he's continuing to get bigger. Luke McGonigal is 120 in his career. Cole Urbis is 49-9. and nine. And then Jake Kozar from Northern York, uh, the second Kozar brother from, from Northern York. He was fourth in the state last year. He's a senior. He's 93-32 and 32 in his career. Yeah, so some pretty interesting stuff there. Uh, a couple guys uh, returning with, with state medals, so should make for an interesting mix, even if we do see McGonagall drop. A guy I'm going to see this weekend competing at the Ironman, and he's a one-man team, uh, Ian Edenfield from Laurel Highlands, sort of stormed on to the scene last year, was a state runner-up, and really was uh, he was one tiebreaker away from winning the state title. Uh, if you remember that match with Brian Ken- uh, Kennerly, he was, mm-hmm. that, was, that was a – barn burner of a of a i think it was a 2-1 match but it was really fun to watch uh yeah edenfield was 32 and 5 last year uh competing on a team all by himself he he, there is no other wrestler on laurel highlands roster so he basically has to enter tournaments on his own does Uh, he just work out at a club then uh how does that go about it um so yeah he he does a little bit of both he wrestles at the club but he also wrestles with some some coaches and i believe his uncle and his, his father they they work out with them and he does go to other areas and and work out obviously but um yeah i'm very excited to see him wrestle this weekend at ironman see how he can do against some some top talent uh number two in that weight is greg bensley from pocomo mountain west he was state eighth last year 69 and 15 in his career at number three is ben Fromm from cocalico so two three guys there from from schools that aren't historically powerhouse programs um although cocalico has had the fittery brothers they were they were pretty tough uh ben Fromm was a state medalist last year he was eighth in the state he's 88 and 25 in his career so um and then hunter katka is number four a guy we like <laughs> Yeah, I knew you couldn't go without munching and uh, how, how, Hunter I, Katka. I, I can't. I can't do it. I can't bring myself to do it. I mean, I, I, you got to mention him, you know. Um, moving up to 285, though, Isaac Reed, uh, state runner-up last year. He's a two-time state medalist, 106-24 and 24 in his career. He's going to Lock Haven. Uh, Isaac, always he, he fell short to Brandon Furman it, multiple times throughout the season. He's number one. Number two is another Whippeo wrestler, and that's Gerald Brown from West Mifflin. This is a guy who's 87 34 in his career, never made it to the state tournament, and sort of was, wasn't really close until last year, where he finishes fourth. All, you know, they Whippeo finished one, two, three, four last year at heavyweight. Do you remember that? I was do ins- remember that. I was going to ask you, I was going to say, you're not going to call for the sweep again? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. They're going to have a hard time past. Uh, these two, you know, to, to make the sweep, but I, I don't know. Maybe it can happen because you have a guy named Quan Debo from Cathedral Prep, who is a, a junior, already a two time state medalist. He finished seventh in the state both years as a freshman and sophomore, 79 12. He's one of the anchors for the Cathedral Prep program there. So, three really, really tough guys all have uh, experience on the medal stand. Yeah, and another guy at number four that uh, I know uh, we had some questions about from, from college coaches and Michael Wolfgram. Yeah, Michael from from Central York. This was a guy who I sort of put up on a pedestal before the state tournament, and then he, he you know he didn't live up to what I I said. Um, he he was undefeated going to the state tournament, so uh, he's definitely looking to make some noise and, and come out with a bang uh, as a junior. Looking ahead, Eric, at what's to come this weekend, we have a ton of really, really good tournaments for an open weekend that are happening. Um, and, and I'll start out from from where I am out now, out here. Um, Chartier's Houston Invitational at, at Char Houston High School. Definitely a, a more Whippeal focused, a double A focused team. Uh, guys like Frazier are going to be there, so you'll see uh, Thane Lawrence. But um, North Hills is there as well, so you'll have Sammy Hilligas there. Um, definitely some some newer faces that we're going to see. South Park uh, has some some tough young kids. Um, Albert Gallatin, Tim Wallace will be there. Definitely a tough tournament. And then Eastern Area Invitational, which is at Gateway. And this is like the 
this this has been going on for a very long time this tournament um i don't i don't know how many years it's been but it's been a while a lot of tough teams here uh in fact they're outside of the whip too we have altoona dubois is coming in um teams like franklin regional uh the kiski school north allegheny penn trafford tj uh really really strong teams uh that are coming in but the question is how far can kiski area go at this one because last year they blew away the competition like 230 points they scored um i think almost every team uh, every uh wrestler on the team placed so uh, and then of course you have jefferson morgan and we're going to see gavin teasdale in his final season yeah uh what do you see do you see somebody challenging kiski this year um at the at the eastern area no i, I don't not this not not at this tournament for for team the team race i mean obviously right right no i meant for for the tournament um are you talking about duels or individual what are you no, talking I, about? I meant for the the eastern area tournament no no i don't see anyone close to, I, I think they're gonna win it uh not easily but they're they're gonna win it yeah i'd say they're probably gonna have a, a handsome lead by the end of it okay they're they're very they're very tough and you know the other schools have really tough kids and guys on the team but no one has the depth like like Kiskiari does it at this at this tournament okay uh what about the the cumberland valley kickoff i know that's one that you ha- have talked a lot about uh in, in the past and, and even up to this year uh, what do you see out of that yeah definitely a really solid tournament i've been to there uh multiple times uh throughout the years unfortunately uh i'm, I'm not gonna be there this year but our pa powers tristan warner is going to be there uh and, and sort of a weird capacity he's gonna be coaching for cumber valley but he's also gonna do a little uh stuff for us there uh cumber valley kickoff has some really tough teams such as council rock south nazareth canon mac cumber valley uh boiling springs exeter downtown west spring forward so uh, wow that is loaded penridge uh, so you look at the, the number of state champions here, uh, and state medals where guys ranked number one, you got, uh, you know, Doug Zapp, you got Josh Stillings, you got Garrett Nyhouse, you got Logan Macri, you got Sammy Sasso, um, you know, all the council rock yeah, South yeah, guys. That, you've named most of our top ranked guys. Oh, oh, throw away, throw in there Easton. Uh, I'm sorry. Easton's there as well. So <laughs> I heard, I heard they were a pretty decent wrestling program. Yeah. And they, um, they might have some young guys coming up through. They, they very well might. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Cumber Valley kickoff classic is, is really a fun tournament. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of upset. I'm not going to be there for it because there's so many Pennsylvania wrestlers. That's, that are, that's the hard part about this. You can only be in one place at one time and there's so much going on Friday and Saturday. There, there is, uh, and you know, unfortunately, you know, Ironman's a little bit closer of a drive for me, um, and I do tend to get out uh, towards the central part of the state to see a lot of those teams um, throughout the season, being that I'm from that area. Uh, so I know I'm going to see all those teams at one point or another. Um, I may not be able to see uh, a team like Becca or Wyman Sam or uh, Malvern or. Um, even Reynolds for, for a few, Oh, actually some of them will be at, um, at Powerade, but, um, yeah, it, it's, so it's, it's a hard choice between where to go. And of course I, I don't want to miss out on a weekend with Mason Beckman. <laughs> you know, he's really, I'm, a, the draw. I'm afraid for you too. Oh, he, he should be afraid. Uh, but yeah, the Cumber Valley kickoff classic is, is going to be one of the, the best tournaments of the open weekend. And as I said, Sammy Sasso is actually at 152 there. Um, so and he's he's the top seed and Garrett Nyhouse is at 160. So uh, some guys at weights that you know we said we were going to screw up and where they're at, but uh, definitely a deep deep weight uh, weights at the Cumber Valley kickoff. Yeah, some good stuff there. Uh, so many, like we said, uh, it, it's hard to touch on them all. But uh, one that we were talking about, the uh, St. Mary's kickoff classic. We're, we're not sure of, of all the teams here, but some interesting matchups. Uh, Chestnut Ridge is there and St. Joseph's Academy. And as you and I were talking before uh, off the air, uh, St. Joseph's can match up with just about anybody through uh, probably 145, 152. And so I'm sure we'll get some intriguing matchups there to, to see how, how some of those guys look and, and how the Chestnut Ridge guys that are, are highly ranked look. Now is, that's a round robin tournament, I believe. I, I believe that's a round robin. Not okay, a so that, that's I think, even better. I think. So you'll get to see all of those guys. Be- I think so. I think it is. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I, you know what? I think you're right. I think I do remember that from the past that it is a round robin tournament. 
So that that's a very interesting uh, matchup. But so is the Greenville Duels. The Greenville Duels are, are very intriguing to me because they have some programs that I, I've been talking about in the in the opening weeks. Uh, Greenville, obviously, but Seneca Valley is going to be there. Uh, Waynesburg's going to be there. <laughs> Brookville. Brookville's going to be there. I heard they're pretty good, too. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of tough teams here that are going to be... Uh, Waynesburg Central. Uh, you yeah, as, to see those uh, Hensons the Henson, in action. Yeah, the Hensons, and then all our Seneca Valley freshmen uh, and young kids that are there. I mean, we could see Louis Newell uh, going against maybe uh, Wyatt Henson, the, the freshman. I don't know. We, we have a lot of different things that could happen. So, as you said, there's so much going on. I wish I could be everywhere at once. Um, you know, but unfortunately, I I can only be at one place at a time. And then, of course, the Slanko Mule Classic, always a favorite of mine. I always liked the the Slanko Mule Classic. Um, definitely some tough teams from District 1, District 3 uh, in that area. Slanko, Central Dolphins going to be there. Um, and, a, and a tournament that I, I wrestled in when I was back in my heyday is the Top Hat Tournament um, up at Williamsport. It maybe lost a little bit of it, its its luster in the last couple of years, but teams like Central Mountain, Cocalico, Fort LaBeouf, Hazleton, uh, Line Mountain is going to be there, Titusville. Uh, it's definitely some some uh, admirable names that are going to be at the tournament. Yeah, you'll definitely see some top guys in there. Uh, probably not quite as loaded, like you said, as it used to be, but still some some really good talent there. One of the best duels of the opening weekend is the Brian uh, Beeler Memorial Duels at Boyertown. Always brings in some some of the top teams, including uh, Liberty out of District 11, Boyertown, obviously, Council Rock North, Governor Mifflin, and uh, Owen J. Roberts, who uh, I think is always kind of uh, has a really tough squad. So I'm excited to see how, how that shakes out. Um, but overall, just some some hammer of, of matchups throughout the the first week uh, i'm excited yeah and just gonna be so much to, to take in and as you said we can't be at all of them so you know we're gonna be pouring over results seeing what we can find and then uh, recapping all of it next week for you yeah absolutely eric and you know on that note i i think we need to to hit the hay or something we got to prepare for a long weekend of just pumping out results and, and keeping you posted on what's happening uh some some notable matchups and just because i'm at iron man doesn't mean i'm not gonna be following every single tournament there is uh, uh in the in the state so uh always you know keep an eye out on pa power wrestling on twitter and facebook so we can keep you updated yeah, it will definitely be doing that. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to tell if uh, if Mason steals the Twitter from you. If you just keep seeing "Let's Go," uh, shout it out on there. That that's probably going to be Mason with like a hundred O's on "Let's Go" <laughs> and exclamation points and exclamation points and maybe some weird emojis. That's <laughs> Mason has taken over the PA Power Twitter account, um, which isn't a bad thing. No, he's, no, he's, no. It's it's he's an pretty awesome entertaining. Thing. Yeah, he uh, is. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this. Uh, you know. It's it's gonna be fun. I can't believe he's. I actually, we're, I'm staying in a hotel room with him. I oh, gotta, he, he's double legging you at some point. <sighs> yeah, he probably is. Yeah, he is. <laughs> we're we're definitely gonna get into some scramble situations and and see see where things go. Uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be fun. Um, so yeah, as always, tune to PAPowerWrestling.com. dot com. We got rankings. Preseason rankings are out, so please go on. Uh, if you don't have a subscription, you can sign up for one. Uh, they're good for a year. You can go on and view all the rankings. Top twenty uh, right now. We're going to move on up to t- twenty five once the the weights shake out. Uh, but preseason rankings, they're, they're top twenty, and we have top twelve. Uh, in the region and in most regions. So uh, definitely check them out, even though they are preseason rankings and they don't really mean anything. Not that rankings at all mean anything, but they're fun. Uh, the, but the more accurate they are, the better they are. But they do. They do mean something because, you know, we hear from coaches all the time that they're looking at our stuff and checking it out. And, and so yeah. they do, you know, to a certain extent, they do mean something. I know, but a lot of people try to downplay them and like, ah, rankings, they don't mean crap. And I, I get to it. To a certain extent, you toe the line. Right, and uh, that's one of the great things about wrestling is you go out there and you can prove whether the rankings are, are accurate or not. Right. So regardless, definitely check out the rankings on PAPowerWrestling.com. Um, and you can follow us on Twitter at PA Power Wrestle. Like us on Facebook and stay tuned for a whole lot of action coming your way. Thanks for tuning in.